I've been neglecting this last tomato, but I've been feeding him. He's got some massive roots, so it's time today to treat him nice. I'm going to do him what is called a crati or a passive hydroponic system. This is just a bucket. White is not ideal because it lets through so much light. That's not optimal. Then I have this, which is ceramis, which you can use any kind of... I typically use perlite. I just had this left over. And some little rocks. Anything that is not, um, they say, inert. So it has no nutrient in it. And this is the top to the, to the bucket. I've been using this for different things for a couple of years. So this is just the way that I can check the water level and that keeps light out. And this is an old pot from the store. People use net pots. You don't need a net pot. You can just take this old pot. And I heated up a little thin screwdriver, poked holes all in here so that you get a net pot. That comes down inside. For this, I have a blue mark, you can see. And that marks, it's hard to tell on video, but that marks the bottom of the pot. So when you fill up water inside of it, you make all of your nutrients in there you're not gonna be drowning the bottom of the plant. You can go to that blue mark or a little bit below it and then set your plant down in there, pour a little bit of nutrient over the top of it and the roots eventually will shoot out of the bottom and fill up the bucket. Whenever you very first start, you should make your water level right up to the bottom of the basket. We'll show you that later. So just showing this, I'm just using regular water right out of the tap. I'll leave the bucket in. And then I just fill up till water is barely touching the very bottom. And I have a counter, so I know how many liters I'm putting in here. If you don't have this, it doesn't matter. People get all excited about reverse osmosis water and et cetera. Okay, yeah, sure, it's maybe it's better. But basically, water from anywhere will work. Just pour it in some sort of measuring device so that you know how much water it takes to fill up to the bottom of this. And that's important for mixing your nutrients properly. But Okay, I'm filled up and I just pop the net pot in and you can see that when I push it down, the water level's right at the bottom of the pot, just tiny bit sticking down in there. And I ended with eight liters for me. So all of my nutrient measurements will be for eight liters. Really simple. If you're gonna make something like this, tomato is kind of a big plant. And so you're either going to need to add water to this reservoir and change it, the first year I built one of these, or actually this one, I had no way to be able to look inside and see the water level and also check the pH. So I've learned that uh, do a bucket and make another hole. This is a cut off piece of swim noodle. It's a pretty popular idea that a lot of people are using for hydroponics. This keeps light out. It makes it easy to uh, view your water and all this other kind of stuff. Securing a big plant like that is also not the easiest thing. That's why I have these loops with these are just drilled through with a piece of cable and I will build a tomato cage on top of this thing just out of some wood or little pieces of metal or whatever it is that you have. You can use real tomato cages and then just uh, wire tie them to that or zip ties or anything like that. But that's the main setup. This is the next step and it's kind of the only, I guess, real investment you have to do in this is this is a pH meter and it measures the pH of your water. That's important in plants in hydroponic because the pH of the water determines the ability of the plant to suck up the nutrients out of the water. Neutral pH is 7, so it goes from 0 to 14. 7 is rainwater. Always coming from the ground, the pH is going to be a little bit high. So we use a pH down. You need to be really careful with this stuff because it's an acid. Um, but you're wanting to take your water anywhere to the pH of 5.5 to like 6.5 is what I go somewhere in there. So I usually pH low because typically as the plant eats, the pH will rise and um, it can move through all the different levels of pH necessity for nutrient uptake so these are all the nutrients you don't have this is stuff that you don't have to have nearly as much i use a three-part system i really have been using this for a couple of years now i like it. it's pretty easy there's some other ones out there that I'd like to try there's also nutrients out now i know it's a company called advanced 
that has a pH buffer in it. So you don't have to do this step in theory. You just, it's a two part nutrient that you pour into the water and it will automatically buffer and it will keep a stable pH for two weeks. Real magic stuff. I haven't used it yet. I'd like to try. Um, if you don't want to go that way, a pH meter, I think is always a, one of the most important things you can buy. You can get an expensive one, you can get cheap one, you can get one with, get a pH meter. It will help your plants grow quite a bit. Okay, so I have my pH down in the 5.5 range. 5.5 is kind of your low end and uh, it will rise definitely in the next couple days. This is eight liters of water and I used two and a half milliliters. Uh, I use a little pipette and go really slow with the pH down because it's super potent and you only need a tiny bit. It's eight liters of water with two and a half milliliters of pH down. Everybody's water's pH is gonna be different and the strength of your pH down is gonna be different. So just go slow, add pH down slowly, keep testing. And then once you have kind of a base, you'll know for how much water, pH down you need, and then all that stuff. And you don't have to measure all this out every single time. Just do it your first time, then you're good. There's the mixed up ambiotic fluid. Looks like it. Um, follow your nutrients feeding chart. You can find them online. You probably get them. They're written on the back of the bottle as well, depending on what stage that your plant is at and how you're growing it. If you're doing a soil with this or you're doing a hydro or a corco grow, it's written right on the bottle. Follow that and you can kind of avoid measuring EC and all that. It, it, for beginning, don't worry about it. Just get your pH down. The EC meter is interesting. It is important at some levels, but for doing a passive crafty system, totally easy. A little bit of pH down for your water. Mix in your nutrients the way that the company says to do it and just put it together and let it go. That's it. This is how I'm planting him out. Put him in here. I'm gonna put a couple bigger rocks in the bottom to stop the small pieces from going through. I hung, pulled a couple through. He just needs to have some air on the top of his roots. That's why he'll be drinking out of here and uh, he'll start growing out of all those holes. So now lightly and carefully add in the uh, substrate, the rocks, but that's how you do it. Okay, he's planted. I just go ahead and dip him down into the nutrient. That's gonna fill up the pot and soak his roots really good. Let him sit just above the water line. And that will fill up everything really nicely. Then put your top on and he's ready. There he is finished. He's enjoying the hot tub area. And we built a little cage out of wire. Just This is just fence wire. It's really slapped together with fence wire and some zip ties. Very simple, but it will give him some support as he starts to grow. We typically don't get wind in this direction, so he's protected from wind. This corner is south facing, so he should have lots and lots of light and warmth. But we will follow him, and as a reference, I can cover him with my hand. So he's about 10 centimeters tall at the moment, four inches. Whatever you want to say. Yeah, he's quite droopy. The sun's hot for him, but that's good. That's good. That's good. He's my goal is to have a tomato by February, and he has the flower right there. He's going to flower pretty soon. His nutrients are set up for that, and we'll see if we can't get him up to uh, producing a fruit in February. Today is the 22nd of December. It is the first day of winter, and it's gloriously warm out here in Spain.